what is tan h function how is it different from sigmoid activation function does it solve the problems with the sigmoid let's have a look in this video hello everyone my name is shiva and welcome to my channel this is the seventh video of the series neural network from scratch in python from the last few videos we have been discussing about activation functions we have already seen step and sigmoid activation function in the previous videos. In this video, we will go through tan h activation function and its implementation. Before doing that, let's revisit the drawbacks of the sigmoid function. We have already discussed the problems of vanishing gradient and not zero centered, but we missed the last one. In case of step function, we saw that it cannot be used for multi-class classification. It can be only used for binary classification. The same is the case for sigmoid. When we are discussing about this binary classification and multi-class classification, where is it actually making difference? The difference is in the output layers. So it doesn't matter how many hidden layers you have, what activations you use in the hidden layers, it doesn't matter. Only the output layer indicates the number of classes. If the output layer has three neurons, then it indicates that it has three classes. If it has 10 neurons, then it indicates that it has 10 classes, right? So when we are saying that the sigmoid can't be used for binary classification, it meant that it can't be used for the output layer. It can still be used for hidden layers. Whereas the output layer, it can't be used if it has more than two classes. Let's see why we can't use this for the multi-class classification. Let's consider this example of multi-class classification. So here you can see the output has four neurons. So that means it is actually a four class classification. Now let's suppose that I am getting the values as these two, three, five and one. These are the weighted sum of the inputs coming. Now I need to apply sigmoid on top of this. So if I apply sigmoid on top of two, three, five and one, I will get the values as 0 0.88, 0 0.95, 0 0.99. 0.73 now what is the target here out of these four classes i need to decide what is the actual class from these four so my simple assumption is i will take the case where the probability is highest if you have to choose among these four which is my final output my probability scores the sum of all these should be equal to one but this is not the case here in case of sigmoid you can get any value there is no restriction that you will not get three or five like this in fact you can get even five here then what will you do you will get like 0 0.99 here that's why sigmoid you cannot use for multi-class classification that's about the drawbacks of sigmoid now let's come back to tan h why tan h is introduced now tan h is introduced to solve one of these drawbacks so we have a requirement that it's better if a activation function is zero centered this is solved by using tan h tan h is a zero centered activation function let's look at the function definition here so if you observe this this is also containing exponential terms in fact the tan h can be represented in terms of sigmoid also so what are the limits here the first observation you can see the limits are from minus 1 to plus 1 let's see how this range is coming between minus 1 to plus 1 we have seen this example in the previous case also in case of sigmoid the exponential terms vary like this as the input x varying between minus infinity to plus infinity the exponential terms behave like this now using these let's calculate the range of tan h so if my x is minus infinity exponential is 0 and negative exponential is infinity so if i substitute this this will come like this this is equal to minus 1 so we all know right tan h function is e power e power x minus e power minus x divided by e power x plus e power minus x so i am substituting the values over there and if i take x as 0 then both are 1 so it is 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 which is 0 and if my x is plus infinity this is like infinity minus 0 divided by infinity plus 0 so you can cancel out and you can give as 1 so now you can see if my x is varying between minus infinity 0 and plus infinity tan h is varying between minus 1 0 plus 1 now if you look at the graph of tan h this is looking same as sigmoid but if you observe closely there are some differences let's see them clearly if you observe the plot there are basically two differences between sigmoid and tan h the first one is sigmoid is between 0 to 1 whereas tan h is between minus 1 to 
plus 1. The range is different. Tan H is having negative values also. Whereas sigmoid is having only positive values. And the second one is tan H is steeper. If you see the slope of tan H, it is much steeper than the sigmoid. So at minus 2 and plus 2, the tan H almost saturated. Whereas the sigmoid still have some values. So if you see there is a difference between tan H and sigmoid curves. Even if you consider the intermediate values, the values are a bit different. If you consider these positive values also, you can see there is a gap in the slope of this. So the tan H is steeper, that means you will get a bit of large gradients. This is in compared to two sigmoid, it's not like very large gradients you will get. You will still get between minus 1 and plus 1. And one more advantage is you will get negative gradients also. So this is useful because your training will be a bit faster compared to sigmoid. So tan H is preferred over sigmoid in case of hidden limits. Now let's look at the derivative of the function. If you calculate the derivative, it will come down to this 1 minus tan H square. So the derivative is only varying between minus 2 and plus 2. Only between these two values the derivative has some change. After that, as you go in both the extremes, it is almost getting saturated. So the derivative is looking same as sigmoid and this also has vanishing gradient problem. It has solved the requirement of zero centered activation, but it doesn't solve the problem of vanishing gradient. But can we use this in the output layer? We can't use tan h in the output layer, right? Because tan h is having minus 1 to plus 1. So you can't have negative values in the output. If you consider as a probability, you don't have negative probabilities. So we still can't use tan h for the output layers. One more problem is its computation time. Comparatively, it takes longer time. So these are the drawbacks of the tan h. First thing, it can be used only for hidden layers. And next, it still has vanishing gradient problem. And next, it is computationally expensive. These are the problems with the tan h function. But still, it is preferred over sigmoid function. Because if you consider the training time, models with the tan h activation function trains faster than the sigmoid activation function. So these are the drawbacks. We have already seen these. Now let's look at the Python implementation. So we know the tan h function is of this form. This is numerator and this is denominator. So we are just using numpy exponential functions with positive and negative signs in the numerator and denominator. And we know that the derivative is 1 minus tan h square. So we have calculated the tan h here. We are taking it to calculate the derivative here. Now let's look at the implementation in Colab. So I am importing like matplotlib and numpy matplotlib is for plotting the graph. And numpy I am using here for calculating the exponentials. You can use the tan h function available in numpy as well. So you can directly use as a function here. And the derivative it is 1 minus tan h square. So this is the tan h definition and its derivative. Now I am taking the inputs ranging from minus 4 to plus 4. As we have seen the tan h is much steeper than sigmoid. So if you take the values beyond these limits, it doesn't matter. It will almost saturate. So I am taking the range from minus 4 to plus 4. And I am this, this code is like plotting the same thing we have used for sigmoid. I am using it here. Now I am plotting two values. One is the tan h and the second one is its derivative. Let's see how it looks. If you observe this, this is the tan h, it is ranging from minus 1 to plus 1, s shaped curve and this is its derivative. That's all from this video. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please hit the like button and comment if you have any suggestions or corrections. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I have shared the playlist and resources in the description below. In the next video, we will be discussing about softmax activation function in detail. So far we have seen binary classification, now we will see the multi-class classification problem. See you there.